All right, so we're ready to install our 2018 plus Roush F-150 grill light kit. So let's take a look at the hardware that's included first. Um, first set of hardware we have here is the installation brackets for the grill. Then we've got the installation uh, bolts and hardware here. We've got our grill um, harness extension here for the lights and the grill. And then that's going to plug into our harness um, outside of the grill, which is going to run to our switch panel and our power feed and ground. Now then when we move on to the inside hardware, we've got the three-hole switch panel with the three rocker switches, and we have the switch panel wire harness here, and then our power lead harness to power the switch panel itself. So let's go ahead and get started here uh, disassembling the grill. And the first thing we want to do is mask it all off. All right, so the reason we want to mask this grill off is so we don't scratch it. Um, this grill has a painted surface to it, so it's going to be very easy to scratch, especially being that it's a matte finish. So you want to take some masking tape or something equivalent, not something that's too sticky because you don't rip the paint off, obviously, but some masking tape should be just fine. You want to, you want to mask this all off so that as you're taking it off, and when you do take it off and you're assembling the light kit in it, you're not scratching the grill. So as you see, we've got our grill masked off pretty well now. So now I'm going to move on to the lower piece um, below, below that grill, above the bumper, and then the flares on the outside. All right, so now our masking off job is done. And you can kind of see why this is important as I start taking these things off. But you'll notice the top portion of the, the lower part of the bumper here. Um, is masked off because that piece slides off. The piece above that is masked off because the grill is going to slide off, or it's going to slide off under the grill as well. Um, and then the flares here on the side are masked off because this piece right here is actually going to pop off and would at one point in time rest on that flare. So you want to be careful with that. So let's go ahead and start taking things apart. All right, so next what we need to do is we need to take these little tabs out. You're going to notice these all over the place here on the top. It looks like 14 of those. So you're going to remove all those. This top panel is going to come off. You're going to move this to the side. So when removing these, it's easiest to have like a, a little trim removal tool, something like this. It's got a split in the middle. You can get under there nice and gently and pry these things up. First pry the top, then pry the second piece, just like this, and then they come up nice and easy. Okay, with all the top tabs removed, this should lift off. Make sure you kind of check around in case I missed pointing one out. I can't remember if I pointed this one out here or not. Uh, but now this should lift right up, just like that, and it does. Now the top side of our grill is exposed. All right, so the next thing you're going to notice, you're going to notice these uh, little harnesses right here, all right, with the little blue connectors. Now these are what are going to um, power your LEDs here in the front, the little amber LEDs. So you want to unplug these so that the grill can be removed. And there are a couple other harnesses here um, that control like the front camera if you have that and so on. So you want to remove those as well. Um, you might have to clip some of these zip ties and if, that's, if you do that's fine. Just zip them back up when you put it back together and then we should get this clear of the grill and be able to re uh, start unbolting everything. All right, I want to point this one out right here um, because this is important. Um, you're going to notice this is retained with this little split clip. Okay, you want to be really careful not to lose that clip. You can actually use your fingers and kind of move that aside. And this little split around the outside here is what holds that groove on. So be careful not to pry that and that piece fall off because then there's nothing going to be there to hold this. When you put it back together, you just push it in and it'll, it'll pop back into place. Now we've got these removed and we can take this apart. All right, so the next thing you're going to need is a 10 millimeter socket, all right, and that's to remove these top bolts. All right, so we're going to remove these top bolts, and that's what retains this portion to the grill. So let's go ahead and take those off. And you should be keeping all of these bolts in a uh, little container so that they don't get lost. Um, it's not a bad idea to separate them uh, in stages if you want to really take your time so you know where everything goes back to. You know, maybe um, maybe get a few little cardboard boxes and write on each one, you know, top of the grill, you know, bottom of the grill, and so on. Uh, that way, uh, you don't mix anything up. 
All right, so we've got all four of these removed now from the top here. That's the top portion of the grill, but we're not done yet. And there's all, all some other locations we need to unbolt this from. Um, so we're going to move on to those. All right, so it's a little dark inside this fender well here, but hopefully you can see. The next thing we need to do is we need to remove these two bolts here that hold the front side of this uh, fender flare on. And then we need to remove this one push pin and this is done on both sides of the truck. All right, that's gonna let you move these flares out of the way so you can take this front lower portion off below the grill. Then you can access some other bolts that need, are needed to remove that grill. All right, so the socket size you need for these is a seven millimeter. All right, so removing these from those flares is a bear. These are really long push tabs. You wanna just go really slow Again, you're probably gonna need that trim removal tool to pull those out. And if you break one, just go to your local auto store and just get another one. They're, they're pretty common. They don't necessarily have to be as long, but um, as long as you, you know, you're covering everything when you're pushing that in. All right, now that we've removed those three pieces on each side, we're able to remove this or pull this um, fender flare aside. Just reach in underneath. If you drop the clip, then obviously just pick it up and slide it back in there. That's just one that retains the the bolts. Um, you're going to slowly work this. There's some, some adhesive. So slowly just work this. Um, you can re, you can put new adhesive down, but we're not taking the whole thing off, so it's not going to be, I don't think it's critical that it's going to, that you can't re-stick this the way it is. Because you're just taking the front portion back a little bit so you can access this. Now you're going to take your plugs here for your marker lights because you see you've got marker lights in here as well and you need to unplug those just like you did on the top of the grill so you're going to pull those aside and you're going to do this on both sides as well so then that is free now when you put this back together you want to make sure you slide these plugs back through this hole so that you can plug these back in all right so we've removed that on both sides we've got this out of the way now what we want to do is actually get in and reach in behind the flare and pop this piece. I know you can't see it here, but you'll just reach in from behind here and you're going to pop this piece out. So again, here is that piece. You're going to reach in from behind. You're going to pull this to the side and there's a clip and that pops out. See that? That piece is this right here. So you're popping that out of these grooves. And when you do that, you can see this is behind the grill. This is one of the reasons you want to mask all this stuff off so that you're not scratching these surfaces as they mate up with each other. Because as we pull this out, this is going to rest on top of there. So I'm going to pull this along here. And that's going to work these grooves out. Pull these plugs through the hole. All right. This back here doesn't really matter so much if you do scratch it because it's going to be hidden from the hidden by the uh, flare itself. You kind of want to work on both sides a little bit so that it comes off straight. And at some point in time, this is just going to pop right off. Resting that. And if you pull this out and try to get this thing straight, we are going to end up with it touching this front of the flare. That's why that's important. Let's work this down. It should continue to pop out of place until you get them all. slow, 
Which way do I want? Again, there you go. That slides right off. Now you see why that's important to mask the top of this piece off here on top of the grill. Because if you don't, you have a potential of scratching that when you're pulling this off. So now you've got that lower portion off. I'm just going to slide that under here for just a second, out of our way. Now you can see the lower portion of the grill. Now, um, there are some places that we need to, to take some bolts off here so that we can remove this grill completely. All right, so the next thing we're going to remove, there's a bolt right underneath it here on each side. That's an eight millimeter. So we're going to remove both of those. All right, and now, as we move this and work this out, again, once you've removed all those things, you should be just fine. You just have to work it out. There's a rubber strip here that kind of catches the front. It makes it difficult to pull this out sometimes. Just going to work that slowly. But surely, then your wires, make sure you move your plugs out of those holes because that you've unplugged. Slowly but surely, voila, and here comes our grill. And that rubber strip. Okay. And there is our removed grill. Now we can begin taking the back section off and installing the lights. Now the one thing you're going to want to look for here, I'm just looking here as we go, um, and this is actually a common thing, probably fall on the ground, are the clips, these little metal clips on the back side that hold this in place here, a lot of times will fall out. So, if they do, I need to try to find my signal there now. Or, if you lose one completely, you can just go to your local auto Ford store and you can get one. This is what they look like. And again, they slide on the back side of here. You can see it. They slide on the back side here. So if those pop off, just try to find those and then pop those back in place. I'm going to start with this outer part of the grill. I think we need a 10 millimeter. Yep, 10 millimeter. Okay. I'm going to take these four bolts off on the outside here. Now these are a little tricky because there's there's a bolt underneath that actually turns and comes out of place. So once you get these separated, you're going to have to take this and take that bolt off. They, they rarely do the nuts come off the back side without um, taking the whole thing off. So you've got these four. You need to remove those. Okay, so they'll probably stick to it. So you think they're still stuck on there, but they're really not. You've got it loose. It just it spins the the bolt from the back side of the plastic on the bottom part of the grill. So we've got a 13 millimeter. So I'm going to use this deeper socket just so I can get some depth. Yeah, I'm going to take that 13 millimeter off. I guess I didn't show you real well. This is your 13 millimeter down in here. So that's your 13 millimeter bolt. And now the last thing on the bottom side here, you see this rubber panel. We're going to need our trim removal tool again because we need to pop all these little tabs out that, can, that are holding both of these together. And that keeps water from splashing up into the grills as well.
Move one left here. There we go. So that removes that. Okay. And now, the very last thing, we've got these little push clip tabs here. And these are the last thing that should hold this together. And we're just going to push on these. That should kind of separate this. You can use a screwdriver, you can use a trim removal tool, whichever. Again, be gentle, but Easiest thing, there's actually a lip right here is to get in there underneath that lip, pry it back on each one. And work your way down. Last year on the top, you've got these little push pins. You're going to pull those out with your trim removal tool. Okay, just make sure you're keeping track of your hardware here that you're removing. things falling out are actually just plastic retainer clips that um, hold those four eight millimeter bolts on the outside. Um, your plugs here, you're going to slide those to the side so you can properly separate this grill here. And just work your way down. You just got a couple plugs to take out here. There's one. We can push that out. Oh, boy, this thing's handy for everything. Now we can separate the two grills from each other. And we've got this grill now. Pretty well ready. Let's see where our other clips are here. One. Alright, so these are the little clips I'm talking about that fall out. Okay, so these actually slide, hopefully you can see here, slide back into here. 
Now, once we take our bolts off. Now, here's another one. All right. This is very common as these spin off. What we need to do is, remember when we were taking those 8 millimeter bolts out, um, what was happening is these threads right here, they were unthreading from these plastic tabs rather than the nuts on the other side coming off of those threads. So what we have to do is get a, a wrench or a pair of adjustable pliers or something, hold the other side, while we unbolt those. So here we have All right, so now we are going to take a socket here and unfold those nuts. this back into this plastic piece right here. And then that will slide back in here for when you're reassembling the grill and everything. All right, so now you can see we've got our posts reassembled and put back into place. And now we're ready for our bracket kit and hardware. All right, so how this works, you know, each bracket on each side, you're gonna rest on these mounts, okay? the other side we're going to rest on that mount and when this all bolts back together it's going to sandwich back into place and get nice and tight. Okay and our inside here um, these are directional so um, the lower side here is going to be toward the bottom so whichever direction you need to go you're going to mount that accordingly and they fit in there just perfect Now our plates are going to go on the front side. Now what we might want to do is go ahead and take our hardware. Um, the hardware is divided into two sections. This section is for the light itself. This section is for um, this um, mounting uh, plate right here. So let's start with that because I want to get that started. off for right now just so I can turn this upside down and start one at a time here. Alright, so we've got this plate here. I'm going to turn this on its top so I have access to this. Now this gives you some adjustment um, from being able to slide side to side. So you don't want to tighten it all the way down quite yet. We need to take our plate out. The plates are universal though so they'll work on either side. And again, this is a no drill option here for you, which is what's nice, so you're not hacking up your Roush grill. Nobody likes to tear up their brand new vehicle. And 
inch. Our plate's going to go here on the front with our hardware. Um, you're going to take your carriage bolt. See, they've got a, a square head. I keep reading. Sorry about that. You're going to want to take your carriage bolt because you see they have a square head. And those are going to go through this plate like so. That square head is going to keep that from turning so that when this goes on the other side and you put your nut on, it's not going to spin. So there's one. I'm going to put the other carriage bolt in. There's two. And I'm going to hold these in place as I slowly kind of sit that upside down here. And then I'm going to put a washer on. All right, on each end. And then I'm going to put a lock nut on. Okay, on each end. Now once I get these spun on here, it's not going to fall off. And then I can just tighten it down with a wrench. I'll go ahead and do the other side as well. So we will get our other plate out here. through here. I'm going to slide it here on the grill. I'm going to put my T-bracket on. Get those through those holes. Like so and then we're going to put our washers and our lock lock nuts on. tighten that down just a little bit so that when I am ready to tighten it down the rest of the way, I can. So those should use push the, the carriage bolt up a little bit so that the square head holds onto the bracket. Again, don't over tighten it because we want to be able to move this side to side for right now. Get it down a little bit, but leave yourself some room so you can slide this thing. Getting closer. I think that's yeah, that's about as tight as I think I'm going to get it. Plus, you don't want to slide it too tight anyway on the front of the grill. You might scratch the paint. Give yourself some, some play, but not too much. Just enough to figure out that. Matter of fact, I might just back this one off just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. All right, so yeah, I've got plenty of play there, but not too much. Do the same thing on the other side. ready for our lights um, because we want to put those in there um, we're going to do some final adjustments to the lights here on the front side once we get this back grill on because um, we've actually got to bolt the back grill on to, to secure that, that other bracket here um, 
you see right, that's the other side actually, you see right there. So once we bolt that other curl on, that is going to um, enforce this bracket so that it's not going to move. So you've got some adjustability up and down on this side. You've got some adjustability in and out on this side. So now that we, we have that ready, we'll go ahead and get our lights out. All right, so here's our lights, uh, rigid E-series, uh, E-4s. Um, this is a, a driving combo, so it's a spot flood combo. It's going to give you a nice combination of everything. Driving is our brightest light. Um, it comes with its own set of hardware here, but we're not going to use most of this. The only thing we're going to use are there two plastic tabs here that retain the bolts in place. Um, this kit replaces all of this stainless steel hardware with black oxidized stainless steel for a much cleaner, stealthy look than this shiny uh, stainless steel here. So we're going to take those two pieces out and we're, gonna, we're not going to use the other stainless steel hardware here because we don't want it shiny, we want it black. So we're going to take those two pieces out. Okay. And now we're going to move on to the second pack of our hardware, which goes to the light. Cut that open. Maybe. I'm going to cut my hand. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take that hardware out. I'm going to just sit down what I don't need yet. You're going to want half of it. You're going to want two of these black oxidized stainless steel washers, two of the black oxidized stainless steel bolts into stainless steel oxidized nuts. So assembling this light, you are going to slide one of these nuts into here. You're going to put this in place as well, and that's going to kind of notch into this section right here. You're going to have to do that on both sides. And the trick is going to be Trying to get these, get this on these brackets without one side or the other side falling off. That's always the trick. I think the easiest way to probably do this, and it really doesn't matter which direction you go with the lights up or down. Um, I guess you know, other than the writing, you probably want that up. So we'll aim that up. Let's go ahead and start with the left side. We'll go ahead and start this on this bracket. This is going to actually help us, and there's some adjustability here again, like I said. So we're going to start on this side. We'll put our washer on. We're going to put our nut on. We're not going to tighten this down, but it's going to keep it from falling off. Okay. Still have some adjustability. I'm going to just go all the way to the end if I can for now. All right, so now. I'm going to gently slide this in so that this bolt will meet up to go there. So that this bolt will meet up into this hole here. Now again, we can slide this to the side. That gives us adjustability there in the trick. So now we've got that started. This is resting now on this. Um, this is spaced pretty even here. I think we kind of know where this is all going to lay out now, so we actually are in a, probably a pretty good position at this time to be able to tighten this T-bracket down, because that's not going to go anywhere. So we can actually tighten it down now, I think, at this point. It's going to stabilize some things there. Um, and again, with the, since you have just a little bit of play, that's good because that gives you the ability to look at the, the structure here and line everything up. You want to get the lights and everything in there as straight as possible. Now that we've got um, the nuts on each end of each bracket here, and of course this one, like we said, is, is sitting on top of this post loose for now because we've got to bolt everything together to finish that off. These aren't completely tight. Your lights are still turn. you know, you can still turn them a little bit. Um, and they are adjustable this way with the bracket. See this, this has got some angle to it, so you can make some adjustments there. 
at the final steps. But for right now, we've got that flush. Push down on this just like it would, would be if the, uh, if the top grill was bolted down to it. And this, and, and kind of get them in the position where you look at them and they're straight. And they should be straight. And as you notice, you remember we, in the beginning we said we had some play here. I can pull back on this, but it's not going to sit right whenever this, this bolted tight. So when you get this in position, you're going to notice that this is spaced the same as on both sides. So now we've got it all straight, we can go ahead and tighten down these bolts because now our, our adjustment on this angle should be complete and that should be something we can finish there. And that should be tight. We don't want that to play into that anymore. All right, so we're good there. I think we tighten this side down here. I'm a perfectionist, so I'm just going to move this just a tiny bit down, just because I like. So we are good and tight on both sides, as far as that goes. <coughs> now, and we've got some movement here. That's normal for right now. We're not going to be ready to, to bolt the top side on until we get our wire harness for the grill installed. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so the best way to run this grill extension wire harness, and you want to zip tie this out of the way. Again, so this is the driver's side. You want this plug, the, uh, the female plug, hanging out the side for right now, okay? Your short part of your Y is going to go to your driver's side. Again, we're flipping this backwards, but your driver's side light. And then your long cord uh, is going to go over to the other side. Now, we're going to run it behind this plate right here. This way it's out of the way, and there's, it's not going to interfere at all with these active shutters that we're going to put back on here. That's very important. So we're going to plug the other side in. And it's a weatherproof plug, so you're, you know, it takes a little force to get that rubber strip to go in there. You see how this sticks up like this, and this side doesn't? It's because we've got this zip tied down. We're going to do the same thing here. We want to bring this down flush. We're going to zip tie it to the bracket. This way, it's not going to lift up and uh, interfere with the uh, active shutters. So you want to pull that down. You can still swivel this light, even with that pulled down like this. And pull that down. It just brings this plug back and down to this bracket, just like this. It gives us some play there. You can see the other side's already like that. You can still turn and adjust your light to get them to where you want them, um, but that's out of the way. Now, we can run the rest of our line back behind here. And we can just add, you know, use a couple more zip ties here to tie this up. So we'll just use one here, and this will take out our slack. There's one. <clears throat> Do one on the other side here. And then just takes out our slack. You can still swivel your lights just like that. And that's nice and clean. Everything should be out of the way as far as that goes. Um, we'll go ahead and snip those off now. You don't need these extra pins anymore. And that is nice and clean. I mean, if you look at that, that is nice and clean. Obviously, we've got a little bit of play here. We can still swivel our, swivel our lights where we want them. We're going to tighten this up at the very end here when we get done. We want to play with those. You can give yourself a little more slack you can. You just pull on that. But, but anyway, the idea is you want to keep this down. You want to keep this out of the way of those grills or those active shutters. So I think we're good. Again, we're hanging this out the side for right now. We're going to go ahead and put our Put our active shutters back on and make our other connections here to our wiring to connect that so that uh, we can see where we want to take our other wire out of. So you want to make sure you get the right side to your grill and probably the easiest way to tell is if we look here at the bottom, this is the bottom side. 
All right, so let's start, just kind of lay it on the top here first. Let's kind of lay it on the top here. Get our wires out of the way. Those are going to end up going through here somewhere. Let these go through here. Hopefully you can see this. This plug we had slid right in here. Pop that in place. Put this back up here again. This little hole for this piece right here. Let's see here. This little piece right here is going to push in a retaining hole. Just like that. And the last thing we have, hopefully you can see this plug right here. It's going to plug into our camera right there. And I believe that is all of our plugins, so we should be good with that. Uh, now we're just going to go ahead and put this grill back together. Everything looks like it's out of the way. Let's see where are where we're going to take this wire to. And I want this to go behind the headlight. There's a little rubber strip right here. I kind of like that. Um, as far as taking this wire out the back side like this, I kind of like that. That's going to give us clearance directly behind that grill. So I'm going to move the camera over here so you can see that. Just run this out the bottom here. Looks like there's a nice little groove right there. See that? Just going to fold it over there for right now. It looks really good. I like that. Run that right out that hole there, looks perfect. You can see that's snapping back in place there. I'm going to lay this back down on its front. So again, now we're looking, looking here at the grill. And as I'm looking at it, there's nothing, there's no wiring getting in the way of these active shutters, um, which is very important. Um, you can see how close that would be. You've got probably a half an inch, three quarters of an inch clearance there with this one. Um, but if you hadn't zip tied that down where this sits flush like this, then you might have gotten in the way of that active shutter, which you definitely don't want to do. So when we get our lights straight here, when we tighten everything up on the front, you're going to be good there. And um, you can see our wires are not at all in the way. They're hidden behind the grill, so they're not going to be visible there. And uh, looks like we're in good shape. We've got our other wire coming out here, which is going to run right behind the headlight where you're going to make your connection to your main harness. This is also important to have this separate connector because if you do ever have to remove this grill, like we did to install the lights, for example, or if there's a problem with the camera or something like that, if you didn't have this separate connection, you would have to cut the wires and then splice them back together again. With this separate connection, you just unplug it and you plug everything back in. So that's one of the reasons for the additional connections for these um, uh, wire harnesses. All right, so now we can begin the process of putting our bolts back together on our grill. Um, so first thing is first, we want to get our, our little uh, nuts here that we had to take off the hard way and put those back on. At least get them started here. And then we're going to take our socket and we're going to tighten those down. And actually, we need to switch sockets because 
going to be using an 11 millimeter, only a 10 millimeter. Remember, this is going to sandwich that uh, outer bracket for you. So make sure you're just kind of looking at your light and everything lines up straight. It should. So I'm just going to put pressure on that and tighten down and hold that all in place. You, ne you never want to over tighten, and you definitely want to get them tight, but you don't want to over tighten. Um, you know, if you over tighten, you run a chance of stripping threads and you know, things like that, and you definitely don't want to do that. You want these to fit snug, but you don't want to over tighten. And we are looking good. Alright, put that snug fit there. Alright, we're going to tighten our other ones. which is going to go here in the center. All right, so we've got that secured. Um, we can put our panel here on the bottom, but first I want to get our wiring straight here from our Roush wiring. Um, they had it coming in the top here in these holes. So let's get back up through there while we can access it easily. And I believe through here, and I believe through here, maybe on this side. Um, I've got these access holes right here. Okay. I this one might have been over here too. Yeah, because I see the grease. So just kind of notate the locations where they came through at. I've got grease on there. Um, as you see there, get your your wires back through. All right, we should be good there. Let's go ahead and put our uh, let's put our base back on the bottom of this thing. That's this rubber strip, and you can see the curved front. That's going to go to the front, and you should push back right, right into the push locations. Everything should line right up. Now, let's take a look at the front of our grill. Right, 
so we're going to get them straight here. We're going to go ahead and tighten these bolts here on the outside. A little bit at a time so we can still have some adjustment as we go. Tighten that completely. I'm going to do the other side just a little bit here. Looking good. All right, let's see here. I'm going to bring this back just a little bit right here on this side. Just a tiny bit. And this is a flat surface, so this is about how it's going to look on the truck. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so we're going to tighten this down the rest of the way. Now, you want to hold this light to see it's, it's moving as I'm turning it. So I'm going to hold this light so that it doesn't move as I tighten these down. And the good thing about this is that you can adjust these on the outside if you need to. Since the bolts go through though, it's going to be difficult to take this light and take this light off from the outside as far as theft goes. I mean anything's possible. You can get a crowbar. I mean at that point in time they can cut your grill. So if they're going to steal it, they're really going to steal it. But it's not going to be easy. Um, but the adjustment is going to be easy on the outside. So we got that pretty straight. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go to the other side. We're going to tighten it down now and make sure it's straight. And uh, I think we're in good shape. I think we're just about ready to put this thing back in. So the next thing we want to do before we put this grill all the way in is we want to get this plug in behind this headlight so we can access it from behind. So as you see, see this little piece right here, this little rubber, rubber strip here. And this is the piece where the headlights snap into place right here. Okay, so that we want to get this wire in between here. It's hard to, to see that keeps getting blurry, but in between here, in between that headlight and back through here. All right, so we want to just get this wire through. So I've got this coat hanger, and you can use anything you know that you can kind of fish through there. But the idea is just something you can kind of fish through. So start from this back side, and we're going to kind of fish this hanger through here. You want some tape that's going to be easy to tear, but you don't want it to be too easy to tear, because when you pull this thing through, it breaks off in the middle there, you got to start all over. So yeah, use masking tape rather than electrical tape. Which is not going to leave it sticky of a mess. You definitely don't want to pull too hard. You want to kind of work it through. So I think we're good there. Let me see if I can find our coat hanger now. Alright, so here's our coat hanger. Just going to work it through. I think we're there. So we have got our uh, plug through now. Uh, it's kind of short here until I push this grill all the way in. So I don't want this to scratch anything up. I'm just going to bend this hanger down kind of sit it in here for right now, that way it doesn't fall loose. All right, again, now from the top side, you want to make sure that you're putting these plugs back in the uh, correct locations. There's, you should see the pre-drilled holes for these marker-like plugs. So push those back through before you get too far in there, it's going to be really hard to do. 
And again, final step, don't forget to plug them in on the fender flares. You've got you to take those back off again. Been there, done that. It's not fun <laughs> to do again. Um, so, yeah, I think we're good there. We get all our plugs through. These plugs are all up. We're ready to plug those in when we get slid back. So I think we're all right. We're going to slowly work this back. And watching that wire, making sure that that's not in the way of anything. We should be all right, I think. All right. Everything's going to line up. You're going to hear things kind of snap into place. Hear that click. Um, push back here. Push on our headlight piece. I think those clicked into place. I think we're good there. We just have to put our bolts in. All right. I think that's good. All right. So now uh, let's go ahead and plug these connectors back in. So we've got one here. Make sure your you know white's on the white and the yellow's on the yellow because they are color specific. Okay, now that we've got it back on top, one thing we didn't do yet to completely assemble our grill, um, so you can do this in any order, don't forget to then put the, the four push pins back in the top, these are the big fat ones. And that retains the top portion of the two grills together. Final piece of attaching our grill are these four bolts here on top. You remember when we move those aside, that retains the top portion. Right, so as, as we reassemble this grill, you don't want to forget the important stuff that's hidden under these last panels that you put together because if you do, you've got to take them off. So we talked about those connectors. You also have these two bolts on each side. So remember we need to put those back in as well. One side, and let's do the other. All right, then we need to put our lower panel back on. Now again, you need to be very careful. First, you're going to have to rest it on each side of those fender flares. Which is again why you need to have those things masked off. And you're gonna have to start with one side or the other. And you gotta watch that front bumper too, so it may not be a bad idea to mask that whole thing off. Alright, so watch those flares, make sure they're taped off. It's very, very important. Unless you want to take the flares completely off, which is up to you. Um, get it centered. Alright. Get it somewhat started, then you're going to pull one flare or the other out of the way. Alright, so now I've got this tucked under this side, and I've got the other one tucked under the other side. Uh, and that's the main trick. Um, now, I'm going to get this started here in the middle, so that it doesn't just pop out on me. Um, and then, we're going to work our way back to the outside. Before I push the other ends in all the way though, remember I need to get these, these plugs through these holes. So there's that side. Okay, and we're going to do that on the other side as well. Take those plugs back through those holes so we can plug our marker lights back in. This one's a little more difficult. 
not always going to be the case, though. That'd be the other side for you. Depends on how they fall. All right, so there's that. Got those out. Should be able to snap this in. You hear these these little uh, tabs snap into their grooves. All right, and we'll do the other side, and then we're going to just kind of push and work our way through the middle here. Yeah, you're just going to hear that all just snap right in place, just like it's supposed to, as we work our way around. Now, before we close these back off, we want to make sure we plug these marker lights back in. Make sure you check your colors. White to white, yellow to yellow. White to white, yellow to yellow. From this, we removed four of these and two of these push pins. I'm going to put the push pins in first. So the next thing we have is our main wire harness. All right, so we are going to start on the driver's side. And this is our relay right here for that. We're going to start on the driver's side. We've got a relay. We're going to zip tie that here to the side. We've got a ground. We're going to ground off to the side. Here is our connector to connect to our grill harness that we just pulled through here where this, this um, coat hanger is. This is our power lead that's going to go directly to our battery. And this is our trigger wire that's going to go in through the firewall to the switch panel. So we've got our radiator cover here out of the way. The first thing we want to do is we might as well get this thing mounted. Um, there are a couple different places that you can mount it here. Usually you can just zip tie it up to something. And there are some bolts here on the, on the side where you can ground that out. Um, here's a good one. This one's probably pretty easy to get to. Looks like it's about an eight millimeter. Um, just find an existing location there to bolt to for that ground. So this is the ground bolt that we're removing to attach our ground wire. All right, so you can see the ground that we made here. All right, so we moved our ground there and then here's our um, relay. Now we just, right now, we just really need to zip that relay to an existing harness that's right here. Um, so the difficulty is obviously just getting down there. If you had this air box out of the way, it's a lot easier, obviously. But since it's not, we're going to improvise. We're going to just do our best. Okay, so now we've got the harness mounted. We've got the ground made. Our last three connections are our power, our trigger wire, and our connection to our grill lights themselves. So here's our plug here. We've got the other one here. Um, we've got it taped up here with our coat hanger. So let's just go ahead and get that out of the way now. Remove that tape. Get the hanger out of the way. Dropped our plug, but there it is. All right, and then we can make our connection to our plug now. We should have power to our grill lights. Now, if you've got a little slack here again, as always, just zip tie that to something. It's better to have a little bit of slack than not to, but you don't want it late, you know, you don't want it uh, falling around. Um, there's some there's some harnesses down in here. Uh, I can zip that to pretty easy it looks like. Alright so we have got this harness now zip tied 
to an existing harness so that it's not going to flop around. So there's our connection between the lights and this power harness. All right, now we're gonna take our power lead here and we're gonna go across over to the uh, battery. And there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, let's, first off, let's just lay our radiator cover on top of here and see where it falls. You can go through the grill, um, but again, you don't want to really do that because then you can't remove the grill as easily if you need to. Nice, nice clean snug fit. So as you see, we've got all our push pins back in. We've got our wire coming out this side. It's not touching the radiator. It runs underneath of this. On this back side here, nice and snug. All the pins are pushed back in. Comes out right here. Um, you know, when we make this connection here to the, the final connection to the power, we might want to zip tie this up cleanly out of the way again like we have everything else. But we're just gonna have to make that one connection to our power and then we're done with that. The last connection we're gonna make here on the outside of the truck is going to be our trigger wire right here. And that's gonna connect right behind here by this brake booster. And then that's gonna connect into our switch panel on the inside of the truck. So the outside of the truck, other than those two connections, is completely done. And we've got our grill lights in. And now we can go ahead and remove the, uh, the masking tape. So as you see, we can actually make our adjustments on the outside of the truck. So, get them just right. I like that. Oh, <laughs> that's the only trick. Hold it in place as you turn the bolts. All right, so, yeah, there we go. Let's see. Nice. There we go, perfect. Let's take a look at the other side. Just a tiny bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna get much better than that. Tighten them up. All right, so now I'm gonna strip this end. I oh, cut too much. All right, I'm gonna strip this end. Okay, I'll put my Terminal on here. And I'm going to crimp that. And now I'm going to make sure that I've got my tubing on. Um, I may never get that tubing out on that end, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now that we've got that crimped down, I can slide the tube over, making sure that we've got good coverage on both ends, because we do want this to be weatherproof. Now, again, being very mindful of plastic trim and things like that around here, go ahead and start your heat shrink.
this protects our connections and don't forget you've got uh, some extra hookups here whenever you need them now I guess we can leave those out for right now I made this just a little bit longer so I could just kind of tuck it in the end of this tubing actually worked out pretty well there we go so the last thing we need to do then is just zip up this wire so that it's not hanging down there loose so I'm just gonna zip it right along here with some existing wires to keep it out of the way on the battery side we're going to need an 11 millimeter wrench to connect there so we're just going to disconnect this piece right here this nut careful not to cross the plus and minus side of your battery with a wrench so once we make that connection here we'll tighten that nut down Cable down. We can zip up this wire a little bit as well uh, if you want to to take out some of this slack. Your uh, your fuse is right here if you ever need to get to that. But what I'm going to do is we have a little excess, which is fine. I'm going to just use one zip tie right here to secure that wire. And we'll trim those off. And we should be done. Okay, so we've made all our connections and hopefully the results have paid off. good to me pretty bright for daylight so that is the 2018 plus Roush f-150 grill light kit utilizing two rigid e4 series lights these are the driving which are going to be the brightest combination of light you're going to get however um, my uh, installation kit will also work with uh, the other variants of the e4 series such as a spot or flood if you prefer.